Hey Blake, I am going to watch your video in real time um, so that I can give you some comments on your teaching. This is, you will have to pardon me, this is like attempt number three um, to get this done for you. I'm so sorry about that, um, but technology has just not been playing nicely with me. But all that being said, here we go. All right, everyone. Please turn to Skyboat's song in your folders. Um, and if you'll join me on the board, uh, I have a few questions about what we have up here. So uh, the time signature for this piece is in 6-8. Um, what do we know about the top number and a time signature? It's generally how many gates there are. Right, so like in 4-4, four, four, the top number we have Four, so there's four beats in the measure. All right. Now, in four, four, the bottom number means that we have a quarter note uh, as the main beat. In six, eight, we have an eighth note. Um, whenever there's an eight on the bottom, that means that the eighth note will hit the beat. So normally, I know uh, every now and then we'll see like two eighth notes being together, or I might have seen one with just a flag, but in 6-8, they're grouped typically in 3. And so because this is, because they're doing something that is, um, in, involves the rhythms that you have, they would probably know that about 6-8, see what th they could tell you instead of you telling them. Um, so you're, you're not wrong at all in what you're saying whatsoever, but see if you can flip the script and ask them because the, um, the counting that we're doing is actually pretty complex and involves, um, dots and 16th notes and what, uh, and what have you, um, they should know the basics behind six, eight time and be able to tell you that rather than you telling them. And so, uh, this is how that'll look in six, eight. So, if everyone will just slowly uh, clap uh, this top line, so in groups of three, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 seven, and a sixteenth note is going to be half of the value of an eighth note. So it'll be two sixteenths. This is just eight. another so one of those where they could so tell you probably, one, or you could ask two, and see three, what they know. Four, five, you could six, absolutely seven, do this if you were one, doing. Two, three, um, if you were doing something that where they were just learning 16th notes as part like subdivisions of the eighth note in six, eight time, you wouldn't be doing a rhythm that is like this, that had like a dot associated with it. You'd probably have more even divisions of it. So this is another place where they could tell, or you could see whether or not they're, they're ready to do it yet. Also, oh, Mr. Mitchell, it's like the sixth. Notes are now like the eighth notes exactly. from four four. Right, so we're used to counting the quarter note and the eighth note is one and two and three and four, and, but this will be a sm smaller note value, but we'll be counting it uh, with six beats with the hands in between. All right, so with that, um, if we can do one measure, we'll do six eighth notes and then we'll go to the next line. I will count one and two and three and so on. Okay? So the so me. Ready and go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One and two and three and four and five and six. Good. Okay. So one more rhythm that we're gonna look at. This is bottom one right here. And so what do we uh, know, have we seen, we've seen it out before for sure, but it's usually uh, been on a quarter, and it's only been, like I said earlier, in different theming. And so if we have a dotted eighth, that's gonna add one of our sixteenths. So, if we're gonna break this down, if we have four sixteenth notes, what we have, above is the equivalent. 
equivalent of this. So we have three of our sixteenths in the scattered one, and then just one sixteenth. So if we have, everyone can uh, clap a sixteenth note. So we one. thing here is just what you did just now the what you're doing where you're having us figure out the counts we could do that before you clap because now we have an idea in our head of what it actually sounds like not that we'll know the counts any better but you've demonstrated it for us so if you want us to use the counts to figure out how how it should go then it's we have pulled the rabbit out of the hat a little bit early not saying that that's something that you have to do you're allowed to just like go you know what i mean you're allowed to just roll through it and say hey guys repeat after me and you know you clap it out and you do it but you're taking us through the process um and if you want us to go through the process and authentically get to the answer ourselves what you're doing right now is should have gone in front of what you just did we have Included in that one and two, what does that mean that this is going to be? And of two. Exactly. So this will be on the and, and then this will be? Three. Three. And so then the next week we have a quarter note, and we know how many eighth notes are in a quarter? Two. Two. Okay, so this is going to start on what B? Four. Right. And, uh, We're we're just day answering uh, correctly. And so because and it's we like, have ah. two eighth notes included, this will include include beats four and five, which leaves us on what beat? Six. Six. And I have one more note, and because it's the sixteenth, what is this last one? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So do we say the five? So we'll not say the five, so I'm gonna erase all of the ones that we don't say. good view, verbal cueing just talking over us which is totally fine in this case people do it all the time um of one more time you know just lets us know we are listening we're paying attention to you we're ready for you to say something great good all right now if you look at Scarlet's song
what do we notice about this first measure of the piece? Well, let's just look at the rhythm. This is familiar. That's the one. <laughs> we just did that. Yes. Good. That's so the one. We just measure. did that. Um, and basically, what it's, this figure is right here is going to repeat uh, a fair amount of the piece. Uh, what's different about this next measure? Part of it looks the same, part of it looks different, but which... Well, which you just told you us! Kind of copy and paste <laughs> uh, for the next measure or two. The first three beats, uh, 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 Yes, right, so we, we have not an 16 with another eighth note for the first three beats of the first three measures, so we already know that. Um, we already know how to count the first measure. The second measure, we have it easy, and we just um, are sustaining the word wing for an entire uh, dotted quarter, which has which is a full beat of three eighth notes. And then, uh, can someone uh, tell me the counts for that third measure? So we have one and three, and then we have what? Four, six. Right. So if you if you want to write that in, if that's helpful for you, you go ahead and write in the counts for those first three measures. Mm. We're good. I think. I don't know. No, Elaine's still going. Um, 
And so what might the first two beats be? That's pretty comfortable for us. So we have one, two. And then what do we have on beat three of that measure? A rest. A rest. Looks like a beat for us. Uh, well, this one is actually a 16th rest because it has two flags. So, you know, eighth notes will always have one flag. But a rest or a note that has two flags or two um, little attachments is going to be a 16th. So that's half of an eighth. So if you want to mark in your score that um, we've almost seen this rhythm before and placed differently as a dotted eighth, so on low, on B2, treat that kind of as a dotted eighth. But we're going to break on B3. So what count is they going to come on? If you have a rest on B3. On the end of three. Right. So we very slowly uh, just uh, say our counts for 17, if you'll fill those in. Uh, so if you'll just uh, say the counts on, on measure 17. So here's our eight. One, two, three, four, ready. Sorry, um, I'm just being a middle schooler. Um, that's, I just don't know why they would do that. that doesn't, all the other ones are straight through. Why would they do that? Exactly. Well, I guess it's the text stress, which we'll get into later. That's, uh, I'm just pulling an okay. actual middle school we'll kid on you. That's dumb. That's and, dumb. Um, you handled that very well. Nice job. Um, you just, at first, you totally ignored it. So, and then you kind of were so like, far, okay, but uh, what? And I'm like, wait, hold on. Here's why I think so it's dumb. It's different than the other ones, which when it's something that's challenging goals. and that they don't get right away, sometimes that's Better. just, well, that's dumb. It sounded good. I think everybody got it. Beginning. Got the rhythm. The rhythm uh, one more time before we put pitch to this. All right. Let's go back to measure three and let's speak the words in rhythm. Here we go.
Okay. okay. So. Um, no, Jesse, so we don't short you and try to like flip you into 10 minutes of just, you know. So, um, yeah, let's not go into Paw, Paw Patrol. I have no idea why Paw Patrol is coming up as like a thing, but whatever. Um, anyway, there's a lot of really good things happening here. The way that you are teaching this is you're very deliberate about what you're doing. You've clearly thought out your process. Um, I think that with actual middle schoolers, you'd have to make the pace a little bit quicker. And I think you'd have to do a little bit more like where you had shorter sections of rhythm work and then putting it to actual singing. Um, not that kids have a huge problem with chanting. They don't. Um, but it's the, the pace is a little slow for them. We're, you know, we're college students. We have a ton of patience. Uh, well, I'm not a college student, but anyway, um, your college students here have a lot of patience. They're, you know, diligently doing what it is that you're asking them to do in the order. And they're keeping their attention and focus on you for this period of time. With um, actual middle schoolers, you might find um, a need to keep them um, being very active. We're, we are being very active in our chanting and in our counting, but they um, are not really getting to the singing portion and having about, you know, having 20 minutes of rhythm work on a piece uh, before you put pitches to it is a really sustained amount of attention for them. So you might actually just have to make the teaching episode a little bit shorter. Um, but also this was probably the first time that you taught through it. And so, you know, thinking about what you're going to do, if you taught this again, your pace in between would probably be brisker. You know what you're asking for, you know what questions you want to ask. And so there are some things that would probably um, lessen the amount of time that you're spending. Um, so, uh, there are really good things that are happening here. I love um, keeping that eighth note pulse the entire time. I think was really helpful because one of the things that you talked about uh, in your lesson plan was wanting to internal internalize that swung feeling of that rhythm that's like consistent throughout the whole piece. And I think juxtaposing the um, swung rhythm or the dotted rhythm rather on top of um, the straight eighth notes is really helpful to help them, you know, really see slash hear um, that there's a difference between those um, two patterns and that the uh, dotted uh, eighth, sixteenth patterns are different from the straight eighth note. And it becomes very apparent when um, you're actually with the eighth note pulse and when you're not with the eighth note pulse. So I think that was really smart to keep that going the entire time. Um, again, I think the way that you could improve this is just by briskening up the pit briskening. I don't know if that's a word, um, making the pace a little more brisk and by, um, it, transitioning a little bit more to actual sung patterns, either saying, well, we're going to cover less today and I'm going to, um, put pitches with it, or I'm going to, um, make sure that we're, we're moving at a pretty quick pace or I'm doing just less if we don't even get to putting the pitches with it that we're not going to cover, you know what I mean? Because that, that would have taken us past 20, 25 minutes, which is a really long amount of time to spend on just one piece in a 7th or 8th grade rehearsal, which is typically between, you know, like 40 and 45 minutes long, um, maybe even without your with or without your um, warm-ups or etudes that you're actually doing as part of the day, your stretching, any announcements you have, that type of stuff. Um, so that's a huge chunk of your rehearsal. Um, but there's a lot of really good stuff that you do. It's clear that you are really thinking about how your students are learning what they're learning and that you understand the process by which they can break it down. Um, just think about involving them um, even more in the process or them being the ones that tell you so that you know what they know um, rather than you being the one that tells them. The more that you can flip that script on them, um, the more you will um, be able to gauge their actual knowledge and, and target your instruction to their actual needs. Um, again, thank you so much for being patient with me on um, getting this video to you. The
there there have just been a few snafus. I have made this video several times over, um, and I'm making it again now. And hopefully, this is going to work. Um, this this time, third time is a charm. So, um, and also happy birthday. I wish I would have known this morning. You'll also be seeing some feedback from me on your teaching episode from this morning.